Halleluja. You know, I began to see. You know, the Lord always protects His Word. Always protects His Word. And I believe tonight's Word is essential in the area of a deeper understanding and revelation. We've heard some of this before. We've discussed it before. But I, it's another level of in-depthness that we need to grab hold of. And would you turn to Genesis chapter 1, please? Oh, praise God. We started a series called The Beginning of the End. We began to talk about some of the things that said it, it happened according to the days of Noah. But there's something that we've got to get more understanding on, and I want to go back. I want to go back to Genesis. In chapter 1 and verse 26. Can everybody hear me? Would you read this with me? And God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And so we see here that man was created in his image and likeness. And so the first one that God created was Adam. Adam was in the image and likeness of God. You know, God is what we might call, in the natural realm, we have a hard time because it's hard to imagine male-female. In other words, the character of a mother and the character of a father. And, and in this character, he created Adam, and, and, and Adam had that character. And then from Adam came Eve. And verse 29, and says, And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, you shall be, for, uh, shall be to you for food. Also to every beast of the earth, every bird of the air, and everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God saw that everything he had made was good, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were known as the sixth day. That's why the number six represents man, things in the natural realm. So again, man was created in his image and likeness. In other words, there was a, a release of God that would have to, a DNA release, that would have to bring man into his image and likeness. Has everybody got it? So there was a uh, released a DNA for man, a, a part of his, a part of God's image and likeness. In other words, they had glorified bodies. They were eternal beings. They had no blood. There was no need for blood for Adam and Eve. Their blood, their body was sustained by the presence of God and the Spirit that was in them and clothed them. And he covered not only them with his presence, but this covering was also associated with dominion and authority over all things of the earth. Everything. So Adam and Eve were a glorified body. They talked to God face to face. Is everybody okay? 
And he said, look it, I want you to take authority. I want you to govern the whole earth with his kingdom and produce offspring of his image, reflecting the image and the character of God. But of course, he warned them in the area of obedience. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, it says, that the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. In other words, an eternal being. He was a glorified body. He did not have blood. The Lord God planted a garden eastwards in, in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we see here to maintain this glorified body, they had to eat from the tree of life. Besides, they could eat all the other things. But to maintain the glorified state of being, they had to eat from the tree of life, which maintained eternal life, which was in the mist. But also in the mist uh, was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It was ruled by the serpent. Amen. And that tree also represented death. So they had a choice. Now, so many times people go, well, why was the serpent in a garden? Well, first of all, he had a right to be in a garden because at one time he ruled the earth. He was the praise and worship leader of the universe. And the earth was known as the mountain of God where it was inhabited by angels. And when he broke covenant with God and exalted himself, the Lord removed him. And now the earth became his sentence instead of his position of blessing and authority. He was now sentenced here. And you can read that in Revelation 12. Let's go there. Revelation 12. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think many times people have a hard time that Adam and Eve didn't have blood. Just doesn't make sense. Why would they need it? <laughs> when Jesus rose from the dead, did he have blood? No. No, he was a glorified body. <laughs> did he eat fish? Yeah. In fact, he made everybody breakfast one morning. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. It says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out the what? Serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So we see here that they were cast to the earth. In other words, they were sentenced to the earth and its atmosphere. The earth and its atmosphere. Lucifer was removed from the presence of God and sentenced to the earth and its atmosphere. So everybody got it. So, and that's because at one time he was ruler, but because of his disobedience and pride and arrogance, God removed him. And what was once the blessing and a place of his authority now became his imprisonment. Back to Genesis 3. So would you think that now that he was here, he would try to get his position back? Yeah. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1, let's speak it together. 
Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, As God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. She didn't realize that she was touching it already. Why? Because she was touching the voice. Do you understand that? She was already touching the voice. Then the serpent said to her, you shall not truly die. In other words, in this arena of death, he called God a liar. Amen? You're a liar. He said, don't you know you've been lied to? You won't die. For God knows that in that day you will... Uh, you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and a desire to make one wise, couldn't, couldn't God do all of that for her? Yeah. She took of its fruit and ate it. She also gave to her husband who was with her. In other words, he wasn't standing there when this conversation was going on. She ate, took this fruit and ate it and brought it to, she brought the seed to her husband. He didn't know that she had partaken of this. Because the word tells us that Eve deceived Adam. Amen. So they both ate of it. In verse 7. And their eyes were open. In other words, their eyes were shut to the spirit realm. They could no longer see the serpent, nor could they no longer see God. Because their eyes were now open to the arena of self and a whole new physical arena of that realm. And they knew that they were naked. In other words, the glory of God that clothed them was now removed. They were looking upon self now entered. Self. Self entered because that's what happened with the serpent. Everything was about me, myself, and I. I will exalt myself. I will ascend above the clouds. I will do this. I will do that. I'll be like the most high God, he said. So now we see that the seed that was imparted in man was called self. And it says in the eyes of both of them were open. And they knew that they were naked. Their eyes were on what? Self. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. So they made their own coverings, didn't they? In verse 8, read it with me. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They heard the sound. They no longer saw him. Because scales had come on their eyes. They were now blinded. How many of y'all know the devil wants to put scales on your eyes? Amen. Amen. That's what he wants to do. He wants to get you to a place where you are blinded. Where you cannot see. Does everybody understand that? If he can get you blinded, then you're led by him. Amen? Amen. So that his job, even after you're a believer, his purpose is to try and get those scales back on your eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he said that, and they heard the voice, the sound of the Lord walking in the garden. In the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So what did they do? They hid themselves, didn't they? Amen. Again, I want to go to the area which is very important that the eternal body from Adam and Eve, the DNA of eternity was now removed. They no longer had eternal life. They had changed. Now no longer was they could eat of the tree of life. I mean it was still there but we'll go there in a minute. So we see self was now a part of man. No longer was it life for them. It was good and evil for them. It was no longer life. It was good and evil. 
So when you and I are born into this realm, we are not a, born in an eternal state of being. We are born according to the offspring of the serpent, knowing good and evil, not knowing eternal life. That's why we must be born again. Amen? So we see here that something changed in them. The DNA changed. And I want to go to Leviticus chapter 7. And then we'll come back here. Uh, I think that's it. Hold on one second. Yeah, it's 17. <laughs> Leviticus 17. Hallelujah. I knew that didn't sound right. In verse 10, Leviticus 17 and verse 10. Let's read it together. And whatever man of the house of Israel or of the strangers who dwell among you, who eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Therefore I said to the children of Israel, no one among you shall eat blood, nor shall any stranger who dwells among you eat blood. Now this is powerful. He's talking about raw blood. He's talking about drinking blood, eating blood. Why? Because in this, this the blood was contaminated. It was contaminated because of sin. Amen. Now the life of the flesh was sustained by the blood. Blood was now put in the body. And the spirit was now removed from the body. Is everybody with me? The eternal presence, the eternal spirit of God was now removed from the body. And it was replaced with blood. And I'll show you here in a second. So we see now that the blood was contaminated. So the life of a human body was now in the blood, not in the spirit of God. And now children of the serpent were established, knowing good and evil, but not knowing life or righteousness. We didn't know what that was. Is everybody with me? I want to say that again. So we see that something happened here. There was a curse that came down because of disobedience. And that curse said, you will die. So everything brought into this realm dies, doesn't it? Because of a curse. Everything. Age. Aging is a curse. Hallelujah. We try to preserve our aging. Boy, we do the best we can. <laughs> but to age is because of a curse. It's called going to, you're going to die. You're going to age out, man. Because the blood is now contaminated. So when someone keeps themselves healthy and their blood as clean as possible, they may live a little bit longer, but you're not going to live forever here. Amen? So has everybody got it? So now the eternal presence of God was replaced with blood that was contaminated. All right, let's go back to Genesis 3.
Oh, hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 3, again in verse 8, it says that they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the, oh no, that, yeah, in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And then the Lord called to Adam and said, where you be? Where you at? <laughs> like he didn't know. You know, like you can hide behind a tree and God doesn't know you're there. <laughs> he was wanting to, he was checking them out, wasn't he? Because he realized that they couldn't see him. He said, well, huh, something's not right here. My kids can't see me. They're not my kids anymore. Something's wrong. And then Adam said, in verse 10, he said, uh, I heard your voice in the garden. Why? Because he couldn't see him anymore. So he could only hear him. And I was what? I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. And the Lord said, who told you that? You were naked. Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not? Then the man said, the woman who you gave to me, with me, she gave me of the tree I ate. <laughs> man, you talk about a fall of nature. Ah, oh, this fault. <laughs> Wasn't me, man. Yeah, I didn't know. I... I love it. And the Lord said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent did it. The serpent deceived me and I ate. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Hallelujah. He said something powerful. He said, because you've done this, you are cursed more than all cattle. People do not realize that snakes are the most cursed thing on the earth. They carry demons. And more than every beast of the field, on your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, but you shall bruise his heel. So we see the Lord just revealed to the serpent that there would be a seed of a serpent of the serpent and the seed of the woman. And the seed of the woman God would send into the world that would destroy the devil. So you think he's going to sit back? No, he's going to try to prevent that seed from coming forth. You understand that? Okay, now. I want to go to verse 20. Um, actually, yeah, let's just go to verse 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of what? All living. Also, for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and covered them. Now, how would he make a tunic of skin? He had to take an animal and kill it. Remember, everything now living had to have blood, didn't it? Everything changed. So he took the animal and he killed the animal. He took the skin and took the coverings that Adam and Eve made and wrapped them around Adam and Eve. Why? Because now, I want you to grab hold of this, because now he said, I know you have good and evil in you. And the only way that you'll have dominion over evil is through sacrifice. There'll have to be a blood sacrifice all the time. So everybody got it. Other than that, evil will rule you. Because now you have good and evil in you. You don't have righteousness in you yet, but you have good and evil in you. Now, if you believe me and follow me, that will be counted as righteousness. But it won't be your righteousness, it'll be mine. 
So he killed the animal. He, what this, when he killed the animal and wrapped him with the blood, of the, the skin of the, what it did, it restored authority again. It restored the covenant of God. As long as they were obedient to God, submissive to God, authority would be released to them. So everybody got it. So that they didn't have dominion over what? Evil. Again, the serpent was good. One part was the good and the other one was the evil, right? Eve was the mother of all living with blood now. That's why he said, okay, you are the mother of living. Now you, she would be the mother of all living with blood. Amen? Amen? Again, the Lord showed Adam by killing the animal, covering the skins. It was a way to overcome the fallen nature of evil. We overcome the fallen nature of evil now by repenting because it activates the blood of Christ. Is everybody with me? And it says in verse 22, Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and in place the cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden, or the flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. In other words, God said, I can't allow you to live eternally like this. I will not allow evil to live forever. What I've done right now is just if you'll follow this, if you'll sacrifice animals, for your sins, blood for blood, it will give you dominion over evil. Is everybody with me? Okay, good. Now go to chapter 4. Now remember that this was a spiritual problem. Amen? This was a spiritual problem <laughs> in a physical realm now. In fact, while we're here at chapter 4, I want to go to Ephesians chapter 2 first. Just keep your finger here, okay? Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And it says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of what? Disobedience. Disobedience. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as others. So we see here that we were children of wrath then. Of what wrath? The wrath of God. The only way to escape the wrath of God was to be covered by the blood. Where well, Jesus came and covered us, but at that time they were sacrificing animals. So they could overcome evil. But they still would only be good, wouldn't they? Amen? That's why you see a lot of good people, don't you? But it's called good evil. See, there's good evil and bad evil, but it's evil is evil regardless of what. That's why many people say, well, I'm a good person. What do I need Jesus for? Because that good is evil. Genesis 4.1 Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, and this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. And Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and their fat 
And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. Why did he accept Abel's and not Cain's? Because of the blood. Has everybody got it? The blood. Why? Because when you offer the blood as the sacrifice, it gave you dominion over the evil that was still in you. Because now we are children of the tree, the knowledge of good and evil, not the tree of life. Everybody okay? All right, let's go a little further. So verse 6 again. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. In other words, evil is going to take you over. And its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. How will he rule over it? By making the right sacrifices. Everybody got this? Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Why did Cain raise up against Abel? Because he didn't do the sacrifice, and evil had dominion over him. Does so everybody got it? So the only thing he was offering was fruit. He never made the sacrifice of the offering of blood so he could have dominion over evil. So evil took dominion over him. Now me and you, when we mess up, we repent. Lord, forgive me. Why? Because it activates the blood of Christ. It's amazing how many believers I talk to and I say, uh, and we'll be talking about something... That, Oh, I don't repent every day. I don't sin every day. Oh, you do. You sin with thoughts. You sin with words. You don't realize what you sin with. We should be repenting every morning, every night, and every time we see it. Now, repent means to turn away. That's why the enemy likes to get you in the thoughts to agree. To agree with doubt. To agree with sin. To agree with these things. Amen? To agree with lust. To agree. So again, in this, we see that Cain killed Abel, right? Because he didn't have dominion or authority over the evil nature because he did not do the sacrifice of the blood. Abel was obedient with dominion and authority because he sacrificed with blood. Now, I want you to understand that this passed down from generation to generation now. Everybody was supposed to know exactly what to do. Amen? Is everybody okay? Amen. Now, we know that the serpent was going to interfere with to try to prevent the seed from coming in. No matter what. He was going to do it. That was his job. He had already been told by God that a seed would come in to destroy him. It would come through a woman. So already you can see that the serpent was already manipulating Cain, amen, to kill Abel. It said sin was knocking at the door. So because he didn't do the sacrifice, he didn't cover himself with the blood, he allowed access to the devil to actually take dominion over him, and he killed his own brother. So everybody got it. What was he trying to do, though? Prevent the what? Seed from coming. See, so this has been going on ever since. Why do you think he wants to kill all mankind? He didn't know. He knew that at some time that seed was going to come and he wasn't going to allow it to happen. Now go to Genesis 6. We were talking about some of this already and I, I want to go a little bit deeper. I wanna, it's important that we understand that Satan was trying to not only prevent the seed from coming in, but even the Lord said, you're a seed. So he knew he was going to produce seed. He was going to produce seed somehow. See, so what we call the human nature now, okay, we see was with Abel. But then he died, didn't he? But then the Lord provided another seed for Eve. 
who produce another offspring. In Genesis chapter 6, let's speak this together, please. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful. Now the sons of God are known as angels. In the book of Job, the Lord called the sons of God before him, the angels. Okay? These were angels. These were angels of Satan. These were the ones that were removed. People called them fallen angels. I call them Satan's angels because there's a difference between the ones that were fallen that put on flesh. These put on flesh. But remember something. Do angels have blood? No. Mm. No, they don't. In fact, they have a body, don't they? But they put on flesh, but the flesh did not have blood. So they needed to have a human to produce a hybrid or an offspring. Okay, verse 2. Then the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strife with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his day shall be 120 years. There were giants. Everyone say giants. 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 Now, in this area, these giants were also known as some of them called them angels, but these were fallen angels with flesh. And then some of them were offsprings that they were producing. So it says there were giants there. So these giants that were already there were what we call the fallen angels that put on flesh. Has everybody got this? Okay. And it says, there were giants on the earth in those days and, alto, and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of men. So they were producing more, weren't they? So these giants, which were also known as fallen angels that put on flesh. And again, this is where we get all the mythical things of mighty men of war and all of this stuff. Men of valor and whatever. That's where you got the myths of Zeus and all the goddesses and gods and all of these other goofy things and all these pagan rituals where people go to new aging and all of this other stuff. And they're doing, reading all the horoscopes and all of this other foolishness. This is produced, look at, these angels brought technology. And the purpose of them bringing technology was to prevent individuals to be dependent on the Lord. They were going to start their own human race. They would be offsprings. They would be hybrids of Satan's kingdom. Remember, you and I as a human, even the human nature at that time, they could sacrifice animals, right? With the blood to have dominion over the evil nature. So at least the good nature could be produced. And by obeying God, it would be considered righteousness. But these, there's no way that that could happen because they had no blood. Remember, everything comes from the Father. Your DNA is determined by the Father of the child. Amen? Is everybody okay? So what happened was, these angels, uh, known as giants at that time, they were fallen angels. They took wives had sex with them and produced offsprings. Alright? These offsprings are known as Nephilims. N-E-P-H-I-L-I-M. Alright? And there were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. These were hybrids. They were offsprings. They were produced. First of all, again, the angels were like the father. But remember, they had no blood. They were pure, wicked, and evil. Pure, wicked, and evil. And they took these women... And had offsprings and to produce more giants. So everybody got it? 
In verse 5, And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. So there was no way of repentance, was there? They didn't even consider repentance. They didn't consider turning, uh, turning away from what they were doing. Of course, there's no redemption for them anyways. Because there's no righteous blood at all. There's no blood of human blood. All right, let's go a little further. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have what? Made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why did Noah find grace in the eyes of the Lord? Because he sacrificed he kept his evil nature under control with the blood of sacrifice. He was considered righteous. His whole family maintained the human nature, even though it was a fallen nature. There was no other nature of human nature left on the earth. Everything else was hybrids. They were called Nephilim. Does everybody got it? And their intent was constantly evil. So everybody got this. This is so important because, you know, uh, we're seeing, these were the days of Noah, weren't they? Well, things are coming again in this arena. Well, then we're going to talk more about this. Okay, let's go a little further. And God said, uh, God looked upon the earth in verse 12. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Verse 9, thank you. And this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a what? Just. Just man. Perfect in what? His generations. In other words, he maintained the human nature. Okay? He maintained the human nature. Everything else was hybrid or Nephilim. Noah walked with God and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. All flesh was corrupted. All flesh was corrupted. Except for Noah's and his family, his sons. Why? Because they maintain the human nature by sacrifice of blood, Overcoming evil so that none of his family intermarried or anyone did anything with the fallen angels. Does everybody understand that? Okay. And verse 13, And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with, um, with the earth. Make yourself an ark, of gopher wood and make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and uh, inside and outside with pitch. So the Lord was making a way of escape, wasn't he? Amen. He's saying, look, I'm not going to kill everything because everything does not have the human DNA. The human DNA has been altered and changed because the angels that put on flesh of Satan's kingdom, known as the fallen angels, have gone into the children of men, and produced hybrids known as Nephilim, and they are not human. They have a form of human, but they're not human. Because the DNA structure is associated with the blood of the Father. Well, there was no blood. Has everybody got it? Is everybody okay? Amen. Yeah, I look a little crazy, man. Okay. Giants sniffling before and after the flood. These were known as monsters of iniquity, superhuman with wicked character. Now, not everyone was huge and giant. Do you understand? So something occurred here. The Nephilim gene was now being passed on to generation. Only known as family preserved their nature by sacrifice of the blood and obedience to God. This was Satan's first attempt to stop the seed of the woman that would destroy him. Noah and, his Noah 
and his family had no Nephilim gene. These, these are crossbreeds of fallen spirits and humans because, again, their father, they, they were birthed by a father by the spirit with no blood. A life, and again, life is in the blood, isn't it? It's in the DNA. It comes from the Father. They can never be redeemed. I want to say that again. These Nephilim and all their offsprings can never be redeemed. It's impossible. They can't be redeemed like mortal man because man is now redeemed by the blood of Christ who was slain for the sinfulness all the way nature of Adam. So these hybrids, remember, Nephilim were brought forth by spirits or angels, amen, that had a body with no blood. It was pure wicked and evil. Now we have a nature that is not a human nature anymore. It may have a form of a human nature, but it wasn't. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Go to Genesis 9. So we have three sons of Noah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to try and get this as much as I can. Actually... Uh, I, I want to go to Jude chapter 1. Jude 1. I want to change this around because I think I'm going to come back to this later. So these angels, when they were, uh, and all these offsprings, these hybrids, all right, because there was no redeeming value, they couldn't be redeemed, Right? So you might think, well, what happened to these angels that put on flesh? Aren't they still around? No, they're not still around. God took them. When he decided to destroy the earth, he took them and chained them in hell waiting for judgment. In Jude 1, is everybody there? Guess there's only one Jude, right? <laughs> okay. Let's go to verse 6. And the angels who what? Did not keep their proper domain. Their proper domain. But left their own abode... He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh. Strange flesh are hybrids. Are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Again, when the angels that put on flesh and went into these women, God took them when he destroyed the earth and all mankind with it except for Noah. And he chained them in hell for judgment. Why? Because they left their abode. They left their place, their covering. They left who they were as angelic beings. Even though they were Satan, uh, angels of Satan, they put on flesh and came into this realm and had sex to produce hybrids. In 1 Peter chapter 3, Verse 18. 
Let's speak it together. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Where? In hell. When he died. Who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through the water. So Jesus went, remember that there were still many, and I want you to understand this, that many humans were killed during that time not by the flood the Lord killed everyone in the flood that was a hybrid that's why he destroyed all mankind because none of them had a human nature anymore except for Noah and his family and three sons no one had a human nature anymore everyone was a hybrid why because they killed all the hybrids, killed all the humans. And they were in prison. And when the Lord died and went to hell, which, okay, he went and preached to them to give them an opportunity to come out and follow him. Is everybody all right? You get this? Glory. Second Peter chapter 2. Hallelujah. Let's start at verse 1. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there was, will be false teaching among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and brings on themselves a swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness, who are what? The angels that put on flesh. To be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world. The ancient world was associated, was before the flood, and all all were hybrids now. There was no more human left. All of these were now Nephilim gene. They were offsprings. But God, who did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to all those who afterward would live ungodly, and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked, for the righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. And we're going to talk more about that later. So when these, when these Nephilim spirits, okay, these Nephilim bodies, the gene of the Nephilim, when, they, when God destroyed the earth, remember they could not be redeemed. So their bodies died, but their spirits lived. That's what we call demons. Does everybody got it? So the spirit of Nephilim, the spirits of Nephilims are now demons. That's why they want another body. They're looking for a body. A demon is a disembodied spirit because it is a spirit of Nephilim. Does everybody got it? Now, something occurred because we see giants in the New Testament also. 
that means something happened that they didn't know about. The only way that the giants of the New Testament can be produced or be brought forth after the flood, I don't want to say just the New Testament, but after the flood, giants were brought forth again. See, so many times people think, well, they're gone now. No, they're not. They've never left. They're still here now. What had happened when his, one of Noah's sons married a woman that had a Nephilim gene and it produced, again, offsprings of the Nephilim. And we're going to talk about that more later. Amen? What I wanted to do is just bring an understanding about the Nephilim spirits are demons now. That's what your battle is. Doesn't the Bible says, and he who believes in me, signs will follow. What does it say? And you shall cast out demons. Why? That's what Jesus said, didn't he? Because the spirits of the Nephilim are still here. The ones that were destroyed in the flood, and they are called demons. They cannot be redeemed. It's impossible. They carry the Nephilim gene. And we're going to be seeing a lot more things changing. Because the Bible says that when Jesus is what you'll see, the days of Noah come back again. And you'll know that the, Lord, the Lord's return is soon. Now listen, these Nephilim genes doesn't make everyone a giant. They have a human form. They've infiltrated our government. They've infiltrated all these places already. That's why you, it's hard to imagine people being so evil. They have a form of a nature, but it's really not. They carry the gene of Nephilim, and there's no redemption for them. The Bible says something powerful. It says that there are those who, in a house... There's vessels. There's vessels of honor and there's vessels of dishonor. This is what our battle's against. The Nephilim, the Nephilim spirits. This is what we battle. The angels of Satan that are not chained up, that didn't put on the flesh, our principalities and powers of darkness. They rule nations and countries and cities. There are territorial spirits that are also Satan's angels. They use witchcraft. Witchcraft is associated with sending a demon to you. Demons are the spirits of Nephilim. And these demons, these spirits will enter anyone. Anyone that will allow them to. The Bible says when a spirit leaves a man, it goes and gets seven other spirits stronger than himself and tries to re-enter again. Because he knows without you, he can't get fed. Without a human, he can't get fed. Because he gets fed by emotion. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? So there are those things that you said, man, I don't know why I did what I did, but I didn't want to do it. And why do I keep doing it? Because your influence is by the spirits of Nephilim. Those are demons. They bring sickness. They bring division. They bring doubt. Remember, their purpose is to kill mankind, to prevent the seed of God to continue to go forth and produce his offspring. Amen? Is everybody okay? All right, we'll continue this later. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. Let this seed be protected by the blood and grow and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name. Jesus. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Now, I want to thank all the listeners and the viewers.
And for more teachings and resources, please visit us at theeternallibrary.org. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and heal you and uplift you because you're a new creation in Christ. And old things have passed away and all things are made new in Christ Jesus.